We recording. All right. So, um, when it comes to this stuff, we're going to be doing sourcing and summarizing. This is what I would like you to do. In your notes that you guys have, I would like you to write the sourcing slash summarizing skills one through three. I'm going to pass out those skills to you to show you what they are. But again, you're going to write skills one through three. And I already have to move the computer because the sheets are under it. Oh, my head's going to float for a second. And we're back. Okay, so, all right, so I'm going to pass these sheets out to you. These sheets, um, you actually already have one, but just uh, save us time. Keep searching for it. I'm going to give it to you. Um, these sheets show you the different skills that we go over in class. We're only going to focus on sourcing skills one through three today. So that very top box that says sourcing one through three, we are going to use that today. Okay, so hopefully you've had enough time to write that. And I also want you to know this, like today the entire point is to write down and accomplish this task. I want you guys to be able to write a paragraph in 15 minutes. So go ahead and write that goal down. That's our goal for the day. I'm gonna teach you guys how to write a paragraph in 15 minutes. And be honest, somebody raise your, like, raise your hand if you think you can do it. Who thinks they can write a paragraph in 15 minutes already? Yeah, good. I'm glad a lot of you think so. It's a useful skill to have. It's a skill that's going to serve you for the rest of your life in academia, but it's even more important than that. Writing is one of the most powerful tools you have. It's going to help you transport your ideas across the world, especially you guys. Like, you and I grew up in the age of social media. Like, Facebook came out when I was 17. So, we've been able to write about ourselves and the things that we want to do. And so, being able to do this is going to help so much. Not just in school. School's important, but life's more important. It's going to help you in life even more so, okay? Not only that, I'm going to teach you how to write a good paragraph. Not necessarily, like, I'm not going to, like, Miss Parlin and all the English teachers, they focus on, like, introduction sentences and good bodies and conclusions, right? We're going to focus more on like content, like what goes into a good paragraph. We're going to focus on the other stuff, like what actually goes into a solid one. And we're going to use these skills to do it, okay? So look at those sheets. One through three is a skill. Number one is this skill right here. It is what is the category of the source. So you're going to tell me what the source is. I'm going to give you a tip right now. Number one, it's a written document of some kind. You're going to tell me what kind of written document it is, okay? So that's skill number one. School number two is who was it? Who actually created the source and when did they create the source? So again, who was it and when? And then finally, number three is tell me if it's a primary or secondary source. That's it, number three is probably the easiest just because it's pretty simple. So the source we're gonna use is called City Upon a Hill by John Winthrop. And it's one of those things, it's like, it's, it's like Pocahontas. It's one of those myths that we've gone over already. It's one of those things where we've heard a lot about it, and it's a huge key part of American mythology. So for example, tell me if this sounds American to you. We are going to be such a great place that everyone's gonna to wanna to copy us and come here. Does that sound pretty American? It is American. That's a very founding idea of Americans. A lot of our ancestors have come here. And so that idea of being a city upon a hill, John Winthrop is the one who came up with that. He said that we are going to make a city so great that everyone's gonna to wanna to copy us and come here. Americans like that story, so we keep telling it over and over again because it sounds pretty American. It's part of our mythos. It's part of our uh, national story. So that's what the source we're going to look at is, um, and we're going to tear into it right now. So before we do, I want to see if you guys can do this yourselves. So I'm going to have you guys write this in your notebooks. One, two, and a three. You don't need to make any gaps between them. We are not using race right now, so you do not need to worry about the race strategy. You only need to go one, two, and three. So. What I'd like you to do is this. I want you to answer these three things. Tell me what is the category of source. And again, your tip is it is a written document. I will let you know that. This is for sure a written doc, but what kind of written doc? Be specific. Number two, who wrote it and when? And then number three, is it primary or secondary? Go ahead and take a few minutes to do that. Tell me those three things. And then I'm not grading on your ability to get these questions right. I'm grading on your ability to use your critical thinking skills. Try. And then we're going to go over it in any way and you can correct yourself. So just try. That's all I'm asking you to do.
red actually shows up really good in the video. I'm gonna keep using red. So looks like a lot of you, some of you go straight for number two, which is fine. Number two is probably the easiest one to do. And the one's kind of hard for a lot of people, so. Although number one's kind of hard, people are getting it right. Yeah, just look at it. Look at the source. Remember what you read about it? Remember what it said? Is there any clues that help you tell what it is? Most of you got it. I'll give you another 20 seconds to see if you can figure it out. Make sure my video is playing. Hi, everybody. We're good. Okay. So let's go over this real fast. Let's uh, see what we have as some answers. So let's go with the very first one. Let's talk about the first one and what it could possibly be. We know it's a written doc, but what else? What else about it can we say? Go ahead, Mayor. It's a sermon. So we got sermon. What else? What are some other guesses that we've had? Hey, Renee, what'd you put for number one? Mm, yeah, you get that for It's okay. Carter, what'd you get? I got sermon. Sermon? Raise your hand if you got the sermon. Just make this a little fast. Okay. Sydney, what'd you put? I put a German. No, I don't, I don't care if you got it. I just want to know why. Because if I know what you put, it's easier for me to like, kind of fix what's going on. Um, what about you? What'd you put? Nothing. Yeah, you can get it yet. And then, do you want it? Okay. Journal. Okay, so you got a journal. What'd you do? Here's a go. It's not a bad thing that you guys tell me if you got it wrong. If you think you're wrong, it's fine. But we just it helps me figure out why. Now, I told you it's a written document. So you might have thought it's a journal entry because you know somebody wrote about it. It might seem very personal, right? It's not, though. We know it's a sermon for a really good reason. The easiest one is because it's in the source information. So look at the source information right now. Reach your hand when somebody finds it. Okay, Mayor, can you read the source information out loud, please? John Winthrow, 1588 to 1649, lawyer, leader of the 1630 migration of English Puritans to the Massachusetts Bay Colony, delivered this famous sermon aboard the Arabella to settlers traveling in very good. So Mayor noticed that it said sermon. So this one's kind of easy because it tells you. It tells you it's a sermon. Now real quick, guess like somebody tell me what a sermon is. Like, what is a sermon? Yeah? Just speech. speech. What kind of speech? So that is a speech. Like a religious, speech. religious speech, right? So again, you guys don't need to raise your hands if you're uncomfortable like expressing your religion, but raise your hands if you go to church or you have been to a church. Okay. So the person that's standing up front, they're talking, that's a sermon, right? They're giving a religious speech. Now, Mayor, the rest of you guys figured it out because it probably said it. What if I took that source information away? What if I took that away from you? Yeah? Your price looks up because it talks a lot about God. Very good. He noticed. So, here, let's do this real quick. Let's do words. Let's feel, like This is the favorite thing to do when we look at any kind of source and we don't know exactly what it is. I look at the words first, and it kind of helps me figure it out. So, go ahead and hit Control F. Control F this right now. And I would like you guys to type in God. Control F the word God. How often does it come up? A lot. <laughs> you guys can see throughout his speech he uses the word God a lot. Let's go a step further. Look for religious words throughout the entire thing. So right now, and don't raise your hand, just shout them out. So you got God, what else do you see as far as religious words? Blessing. Blessing, keep going. There's so many. Hold on. So, Lord, <laughs> mercy. What else? Faithful. Faithful. Keep going. Mm, Moses. Moses. Keep going. Very good. You guys are doing awesome. Worthy. Worthy. Praise. Praise. Anybody seen church yet? Commanded. Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord's already been said. Anybody see church? Mm -hmm. Control F church. I think it's in there. Uh, yeah. Is yeah, it? Okay. Yeah, so church is in there. How often is church in there? Five. Five, yeah. Here's the deal. Look at this. So can we probably say that John Winthrop is writing a very religious speech right now or sermon? Yeah, it's a sermon. So here's the deal. We know it's a sermon partly because it's extremely religious. There's other ways we can figure it out too. 
when you think about a sermon, again, like one of you guys, it's a speech. It, it looks like a speech. It sounds like a speech. If you said it out loud, it really sounds like a speech. So sermons are just speeches that talk about religion. They also talk about morals. And so these are all like clues. These are tips. These are ways that we can kind of figure out, like, okay, maybe this is a sermon that John Winthrop is giving. If you know who John Winthrop is, it also helps out quite a bit. But yeah, we know it's a sermon because it's very religious. It looks like a speech. He's talking about something about morals. He is talking about a city upon a hill. That we are going to be such a great, wonderful city that is free of sin and working towards bettering ourselves. That everyone's going to be so jealous that they're going to want to come here with us. They're going to want to see our city and make it better. These guys like wanted like England people to come over, see how great they were doing, and then go back to England and make England better. Like, that's what they were thought. They thought like we're going to make this a great and powerful city that everyone's going to be jealous of us. And this is like even before America. This is before the United States. But this is a story that survived because Americans like that story. It sounds good. It sounds like a story that we identify with. So you could use you could literally use all of these words as your evidence, right? When we do race, you have to answer the question, which it's a sermon. You have to use evidence, so you have to cite your sources, right? You can use all, every single one of those words. Something I love to do when I'm using evidence, I try to find a quote that has a lot of those words in it. So I would try to find a quote that has some of these words. And I would write that as my evidence. I would say, John Winthrop is a, has a very extremely religious speech, most likely the sermon. And then I would say, for example, the following quote has several words about Christianity. And then I would use the quote. And I would have, try to get as many of these words as possible. That makes sense? So just based on what we just talked about, do you think you could write three sentences telling me what it is with evidence and explanation? Just based on this stuff? Yeah, right? Look at all these things that we have. And that's how you write a paragraph in 15 minutes. You look at it and say, okay, it's probably a sermon. Here's all my evidence. And then you just crank out the sentences with it. And again, we're doing this together, so it's going to be a little easier the first time. And eventually, we're going to get you to the point where you can do this by yourself. You're going to be able to see a source, say what it is, not just say what it is, but tell me all this stuff with it, too, okay? So that's the first part. Is there any questions about what it is, it being a sermon, or anything else to add they want to add? Okay, let's go ahead and do number two. I'm going to move this desk a little bit so we can keep writing. So, number two, who was it and when? This kind of gets worse. This is where it gets really easy. Um, so, who wrote this? Just shout it out. John Winthrop. Very good. Now, you guys know my philosophy about history. You do not need to memorize names. That's silly. That is a waste of your time and mine. I'm never going to once make you memorize who John Winthrop is. And here's something, and here's why. It's never helped me. Not only that, I dare you to email me during the summertime or text me, whatever, I don't care. Contact me during the summer and ask me, hey, Hamlin, who's John Winthrop? I will have no idea. Why would I? <laughs> I'm a, and I'm a history teacher, and I'm not going to know who he is because he's not what I study. He's not necessarily important to my field. I'm a military historian. I know who he is now because I'm talking about him and I think about him, but in, a, in about a month, I'll forget because there's so much history out there that I have to teach, I forget names. I don't, so I don't expect you to memorize names. Again, it's a waste of your time. I'm not gonna make you cram for a test just so you can forget it the next day, right? So, we're not gonna ever do that. But we do need to know how to find these names because a lot of times in life, you guys have situations where you get a name, like you're reading the news, you're watching the news, you hear something. You need to learn how to research. So, what's a super easy way we can find out who John Winthrop is? Yeah, there you go. Why not? Why can't you just Google who he is real fast and figure him out? Just because you don't know a name doesn't mean you can't find out. There's another even easier way. On this website right now, is there a quote that talks about who John Winthrop is? Where is it at? It's in the source. It says John Winthrop, lawyer and leader of the 1637 Very good. He's a leader. He is a lawyer. He is part of the Great Migration. Look at all this information we are getting just from what uh, Mayer found. And again, now that we know John Winthrop is a leader and a lawyer, and he's talking about sermons, and he's talking to a lot of colonists about religion, do we think we can maybe use this source to answer that question now? Maybe even more? We could say that because he's a leader, he might have a lot of influence on colonists, right? So look at all this information we can get just by saying that. And again, we can write one sentence telling you who John Winthrop is, and we can write two sentences maybe, or just another second sentence on who, like, who he actually is, like what's important about him, the fact that he's a leader and lawyer and all that stuff. But these are all pieces of information you can use. Now, the next one. 
The date. Somebody just tell me the date. 1630. Very good. Did anybody put his uh, birth and death date as their answer? Be careful with that. Sometimes it happens. Like it happened in the last class. So some people put like 1580 as whatever. So I mean, it's 1630. When I'm asking this question, I'm asking when he created the source, not when he himself was alive. So 1630 is our correct date. And here's the deal. Again, I'm not going to make you memorize a bunch of useless information. I'm never going to once make you memorize a date. Because you've had classes where you had to memorize a bunch of dates, right, or facts, and then you forgot them the next week. Like, how much do you actually remember from sixth grade history? Yeah. Shock. So, instead, let's, let, let's do something a little bit smart, something a little more valuable for you. Let's think about, like, the general stuff you know. This is what my professors told me. College professors, guys who are professionals and gals who are professional in history, they said, never worry about memorizing a date. Just try to understand like what's roughly happening in that time. So, for example, let's just do this, 1600 to 1640. Based off the videos, based off the reading, based off everything that we've done with each other, what is roughly happening in America right then, in that moment, in that time period? Yeah. Forming colonies. So, yeah, we got colonies. What else do we have? Migrants. We have people migrating. What else? Just rough stuff. General things. What specific groups of people are coming, if you remember those names? Uh, Puritans. Puritans. Yeah, what else? Uh, Pilgrims. Pilgrims. Separatists. Separatists. Quakers. Quakers. Look at all these names that you guys just know in your head just because you've done the reading. And again, you're not studying for a test. You're not doing any of that stuff. You're just trying to figure out this information. And you can use this to write a third sentence, right? You can tell me, yeah, in 1630, John Winthrop wrote this thing called the uh, City Upon a Hill. Around this time, colonists were migrating, and a lot of these colonists were migrating for religious reasons, such as Puritans, Pilgrims, Quakers, Separatists. I made that sentence based off your evidence. I did not... I. Did not make anything up just now. That was all you guys. You guys came up with this answer. So that's a sentence you could write, yeah? It has a lot of good information. And again, you can write three sentences. So writing a paragraph in 15 minutes is, again, becoming a little bit easier. Anything else you guys want to add to this? Doing great. You guys are doing awesome so far. Last one's the easiest one, I think. Anyway. Um, well, I think that's probably the easiest one. This one can be, I guess, kind of tough. What kind of source is it? Primary or secondary? Primary. Yeah, it's primary. So it's a primary source. Emma, why? Why is it a primary source? What about it makes it a primary source? I'll give it to Chase and says. So, or Sydney, how about you? Um, because in the source, it says that John. Yeah, he said it's, it's, it's his speech. <laughs> like you, can, you have to be there for your speech. So yeah, he was like he was physically present talking about this thing. So use your head, like use your brain a little bit. Remember, primary sources are things that happened right then and there. They are either made by somebody who was at the event, who experienced the event firsthand, somebody who was physically there. He gave the speech. You have to physically be there to give your own speech. So you just want to explain to me why. And that's it. Okay. So all of this stuff, all of this information we could possibly use, I'll move this a little bit so you can maybe see the question. All of this information you could use to figure this stuff out, right? So what I want you to do is the challenge is write a paragraph in 15 minutes based off this stuff. I want you to tell me what the thing is, what the source is, who said it and when, and then tell me if it's a primary or secondary source. And all these things that we talked about just now, I want you to use that as your evidence and explanation. Use race for every single one, and the challenge will be to write nine sentence paragraph in 15 minutes. That is your challenge. And remember, if you get it done in 15 minutes, we're out of here by 1026, so I mean, really, if you wanted to spend the extra amount of time writing more information on how the, this source can help you connect to this answer, you could. Does that make sense? You can type it, or you can physically write it on paper. Your call. I would suggest doing the one that you're fastest at. Are there any questions? And go. See if you guys get it done. Thank you for joining us.